Steph. It's Tommy here. Yeah. We're live from the pub in London. Yeah. We've just witnessed a 93rd minute equaliser from Colombia. Yeah. And now we face a penalty shootout. Yeah. To make it to the quarterfinals of the World Cup of Russia yeah. 2018. Yeah. Do you think you can do it? Thoughts? Tom, Please tell me we can do it. Tom, I've had four gin and tonics. I've had five beers. I'm so scared right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but we still believe, we still believe, it's coming home, it's coming home. Come on, England. 4-3 on penalties. Come on! Gareth Southgate missed a penalty. He did, he did, he did, he did. I cannot see that man yeah. go Alla through that pain. He will not allow okay. it. He will not allow, allow it. this to happen. So we're going to go out there, we're going to score these penalties, and we're going to bring it home. Come on, England. Please, step. it's Eric Dyer. He's stepping up to take the winning penalty again. David Ospina. It's 4-3. You predicted it, mate. Can we do it? Dyer. Yes. Dyer. Yes. 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 Oh my god, mate. Yeah. Will that go down? Well, I know it will go down as the best moment in my life. Will it go down in the best moment of your life, Steph? The best moment in your life? Mm, right now, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's up there. Yeah. It's top five. Uh, top five. Football moments or life moments? Uh, life moments, I think, yeah, most certainly. Okay. I mean, um, didn't. Went through all the drama, went through all the emotions. Yeah. When Pickford saved that penalty and Dyer slotted it in. Uh, I think I lost my head for a good five minutes. Don't know what happened. I can't remember that. Yeah. That five minute spell. Yep. All I can remember is beers going everywhere, falling to the ground, hugging my best mates, screaming, feel like I've lost my voice. And to be quite honest, mate, I don't think it gets much better than that. I completely agree. And I think that's a nice segue into Eye on England. Okay. Um... It's my Eye on England. Yeah. So, uh, first up, Steph. Yeah. What a win. Yeah. Um, obviously, it would have been nice to do it in 90 minutes. Yeah, but, but why would we do that? We've spoken about that on this podcast before. Yeah. Don't win the game in 90 minutes. Either score a 94th minute winner yep. or win it in extra time or penalties. That's a very good point, Steph. And I'd forgotten that I'd said that earlier in the podcast. Because I said, what's the point in winning in 90 minutes? What's the point in... Just, you know, Kane, penalty, yeah, hold it in the corner. When really, we can just go to penalties, tease us a little bit, they'll tease us, and then ultimately they'll hit the bar and then we'll Pickford will just make a worldy save and then Dyer will slot it in. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately that creates a better emotional experience for all the England fans. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on how we played? I actually wasn't completely happy with Harry Kane dropping deep. I mean, you mentioned it a few times, mate. Yeah. Harry Kane was ultimately playing as a midfielder. Yeah. Um, I didn't like what, he was, what I was seeing out there. I almost, Why was he doing it? I don't know if it came as a tactical thing from Gareth and the team. Maybe, you know, like Harry's being seen as like the star striker, the man that everyone should watch out for. So, you know, instead they were pushing up Jesse, Deli and, and uh, Raz a bit further up. Raz, is it? Yeah, going for Raz, mate. Friends with him, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe like Harry was, you know, he's, he's a very good passer of the football. Maybe he, they were just like dropping him deeper, so it kind of confused him a little bit. I don't know. Okay. Couldn't tell you. That's my analysis of it anyway. Um, man of the match? Uh, I know he missed his penalty, but I actually genuinely thought Jordan Henderson uh, marshaled the midfield really well. Today. He, was t he was good. And it's a shame. It's not a shame, but, you know, I've always been a bit of a critique of Jordan Henderson, but yeah. he was brilliant. All right, Tom, I'll be honest, that's enough analysis. Yeah. Now, we've done a lot of football analysis. Too much, baby. Too um, much. We took a lot of uh, 
There's been a lot of, a lot of reviews coming out, actually, Steph. Few on the email, few on the text. Yeah. My uh, my brother actually texted in Steph, uh, saying uh, that we that he was really enjoying the podcast. Yeah. I think he actually used the words we were, you and Stephanie are smashing it. Which Stephanie? Was, yeah, it was also autocorrected back to Stefan. Right. Uh, but he also mentioned that Delhi's Delhi has got to go. Um, okay. Had a few other few of the comments saying Delhi's Delhi's got to go. Who Delhi's from? Delhi's a shambles. Who from? Uh, Delhi's Delhi is the worst thing that I've ever heard. Delhi's Delhi is the reason I won't listen to this podcast anymore. Right. Well, Even on the iTunes store, someone said Delhi's Delhi. What the fuck is this? Right. Um, so actually, you know, it, it, the people have spoken, and Delhi yeah. Delhi is gone. So. Well, I've actually got one. No, no you haven't. No, so, I have no, no, mate, Delhi's Delhi. mate yeah. I'm, I will fly across this mic. And, I have and, got and a shut Delhi. Down. Look, give me one more chance. No, no, no. This I, one's good. This no, no, one, no, no, but no, you, Tom, you, you Tom, have, you've had your chances. Tom, you've had no, three chances. No, you've no. created uh, vodka, which was basically poison that yeah. you, bought, you bought from some bleach from yeah. B and Q. Yeah. You've put some juniper berries in a bottle of vodka. In a bottle of vodka that you made with the bleach. Yeah. And then you made some. Senegalese, Senegalese fish. Speciality. Yeah, no one's doing it. I don't care about it. I'm sick of it. It's uh, not. It's not. On. No. Yeah, but it's not anymore, even funny. Right? Like. Look, look, please, uh, please don't shut down Delhi. Look, look, I'm, it look I'm, I'm knocking it, it down. I'll make it better. I'm bulldozing it. Look, I'll make it better. Please. Just We're having a break chance. from it. No. We're having a break from it. No. I'm the editor. I'll do what I want. Okay. Let's just agree to disagree. Right. Delhi's Delhi's done. Right. All right. Well, fine. Well, can it? But right, uh, well, anyway, I've got another feature. All right. What's it? It's called Kane's Mains. <laughs> Um, so it's basically sounds like a thinly veiled Delhi's sh- Deli to me, Tom, mate. Shut up. So basically, Harry Kane's opened up a little uh, delicate delicatessen. Right, right. Hang on. No, no. Ca- no Kane's mate is gone. <laughs> right. Okay. So Tom, we had some fairly positive reviews about the uh, "Is Football Coming Home" feature last week. Uh, young Amy was uh, was the winner there. Um, I'd bloody love to know what Amy's up to tonight. Okay, well, maybe that could be one for Tom's Lonely Heart Corner next week. Uh, oh, I hope so, yeah. we'll, we'll touch base with Amy, and more is that, more from that as it comes in. Um, but you had a little idea about messaging all your matches on uh, your various dating apps uh, and just asking the simple question, is football coming home? Um, Very much a spin-off of last week's um, 10, out yeah. of 10, 10 out of 10 feature, is yeah. football coming home? Exactly. So um, just for the listeners' uh, benefit, Tom has... Um, I mean, he's a very popular and attractive young man, so he's... Uh, oh, stop it. <laughs> he's messaged, 59 girls, um, is football coming home? Um, so as soon as one says yes, um, I will be enforcing Tom. The first one to say yes, Tom will be going on a date with. Um, and uh, we will report back from that in next week's episode. Now, Tom... Um, maybe, on- I could, maybe I could do like a live review with her exactly you will be uh, doing a live broadcast yeah from the from the day from the day we move on Steph yeah a man a little young man who didn't feature tonight yeah which is a shame yeah Ruben Loftus Cheek had a couple of entries um, to you... try and what right you've said we've had a couple of entries this is your entry isn't it well You've, en- you've entered your own competition, is what I'm saying. Look, have we had the entries or not? We've had a entry. It's from you. Yeah, but have we had or have we had not entries? We've had an entry. Yeah. Am I allowed to enter this competition? You're uh, the judge, aren't you? So. Yeah. Pop your entry in. All right. Uh, this. So this is a um, just a little song I wrote. Uh, it's called "The Big Man Steph." Right. Uh, it's about a man called Ruben Loftus Cheek. Okay. And it's uh, an original recording. So. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Fantastic feet for such a big man. Such a big man. Hopefully part of Gareth's master plan. South of the river, he was born and raised. Born and raised. Chelsea's academy, where he spent most of his days. Of his Off days. to Russia, the fans do flock. You should see the size of Ruben's massive pair of socks. Loftus cheek. Loftus cheek. Ruben Loftus cheek. On the plane to Russia with Delph and Jay Ling. Football's coming home, the England fans do sing. A handsome chiseled man at six foot four. Cleans up with ease on any dance floor. Will we win the World Cup? I think we can. We've got Kane and Delhi and the cheeky big man, Loftus Cheek. Ruben Loftus Cheek. Cheek. Ruben Loftus Cheek. Loftus Cheek. Loftus Cheek. 
sexy left to shoot. Um, what do you reckon? I mean, did you, you've cre- you created an actual song. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, they're not going to be chanting it from the stands, are they? But I think, well, I don't know. I quite like it. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Why have you done that? I just, you know, take a different coming at it from a different angle, and I. You've written your own song. Yeah. You've written a song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well got, done. Got a lot of time in hands these days. <laughs> uh, so we've also had another entry come in from a young Tom Casson. Ooh, hot off the press, is it? Hot off the press, yeah. Now I'm actually going to save this song for next week's episode because it is a bloody good one, and okay. I feel like it could be the revival of the rap battle between Tom Casson and Andy Lester. Are you are you doing a teaser for next week's episode? I'm doing a little bit of a teaser. I believe. Andy Lester has teased that he's going to send him his new song. So what I'm aiming to do is have both those songs played out against each other in a kind of live rap battle type showdown. Okay. So look forward to that next week, the Andy Lester Tom Casson showdown. That'll be a big one. So Steph, yeah, you uh we got back to the flat after after the pub, yeah. after all the emotions had uh, settled s- slightly. Yeah. Uh, we had a bit of an argument with your girlfriend and friend of mine, Sarah Daly, because sure. uh, you were meant to be doing the washing. Yeah, classic. And uh, it, you refused because you were writing a poem for this podcast, yeah. which I respect. Yeah. Um, because the washing would have been done at some point. Exactly. I actually ended up doing the washing. It wasn't even my washing. Thanks, Tom. Um, so yeah, what's your what's your poem, mate? Have you got a little poem for tonight? Yeah, I have, and I'll be honest with you, I actually wrote ninety five percent of it earlier today because um, I didn't think I'd have time for it when we got home. Yeah. Um, fortunately, the poem has aged well because I predicted an England win, so it's going to be the last the last verse that was uh, written when you were hanging up my washing. Yeah. Um, have you got a little song for me? A little backtrack of this oh, poem. I'll certainly find one for you, mate. Uh, tough day at work clock watching stomach turning what if we freeze what if they keep out Raheem Sterling the search for a pub that's showing the game standing room only pal oh that's a shame seven pints deep to try and settle the nerves the game kicks off 22 men on that sacred green turf but what a night of drama heart pounding through the chest our young lines delivered, now to take on the rest. So the Swedes lie in wait, it'll be one hell of a meeting. I can see the headlines now. Ikea, your boys took one hell of a beating. <laughs> what a summer we've had, England winning, sun shining. Love Island on the box, Megan shagging, Georgia whining. <laughs> with one Danny Dyer, shacked up with Jack. And the other on TV, calling Cameron a twat. And in this heat wave, the country's delighted. Supporting Walker and Rashford, once divided, now united. But what does it matter? England are in the quarters. Eric Dyer the hero. Who would have thought it? We go again Saturday. The last eight in the cup. It's not coming home. Why don't you shut up? (laughs) Oh, it's excellent. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. I liked how you kind of went there's a different vibe to it this kind of a bit more a bit more aggressive, a bit more spoken word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, brilliant. All right, thanks Tom. Do you want some uh do you want some hot gossip, Steph? I think we can talk gossip. No, no, no. Hot gossip is uh got a lot of love actually. From a from couple, a couple of people. Hasn't and you're lying. Hot gossip. All this, right, all this feedback you say we're getting, yeah. we're not, are we? It's, it's you. Look, I've got the code to the email, mate, so. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe me or not? Yeah. Do you trust me? Yeah, go on, give me a bit of hot gossip. Hot gossip number one. Yeah. Did you know that uh, David Ospina, the Colombian goalkeeper, yeah. was actually married to James Rodriguez's sister? Yeah, didn't know that. Um, but did you know that they recently split up? Yeah, you told me earlier. So has that affected? Has that affected? Has that got in his head tonight? You know, when the spin is looking out yeah. at those penalty shootouts, and then he just sees Rodriguez's little eyes piercing. He wasn't even playing. Pe- yeah, from the stands, piercing through yeah. him. Like, how dare you treat 
young Janice like that. Right, what's the next? Janice. Janice, is it? Yeah. Alright, is that her name? Yeah, like just how, how dare you treat her like that. Right. You scumbag. Next. Okay, uh, next bit of hot gossip for you, Steph. Hang on, <clears throat> how is Deli Deli's getting the chop and this is still going? Go on, Number go two. Yeah, go on. Um, Fabian Delph. Yeah. This follows on from another piece of hot gossip. Right. Actually, wasn't in Russia this week. Yeah. He's back in England uh, looking after his young wife, Natalie, who is expecting the birth of their third child. But right. the hot gossip is that he's actually been feeding her uh, curries to help speed up the birth so he can get back on the plane, back to Russia to join up with the lads again. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure you should probably put, um, you know, family obviously comes first, Steph. I'm, right, this, this for me sparks the debate, and please do email in at T and S. Uh, what is it? World Cup Podcast 2018 at gmail.com too long that but anyway this is his th- if it was his first child fine this is his third child why is he leaving a world cup to go and help his wife give birth she's probably got family friends all around it he's at a world cup which is a month of his life yeah I'd, I'd actually love to hear from uh, so many dads out there that was has got an can we shit. get can we get Fabian Delph on the phone Probably not. Could, I'd love to hear some dads about because I think they'd strongly disagree with you. Because, I mean, I don't think you can you can have any opinion on this, mate, until you've had a child. Yeah, he's already had two. Yeah, but family comes first, mate. You know that. Yeah. Um. Any more? No, I've run out of hot gossip. Right, um. This is all right. Let's call it that. So, Steph, yeah. I've. I've heard that you've been out in the field. Oh yeah, big time. Um, interviewing the fans on the street. Yeah, finding out the viewpoints of you know the everyman of of, uh, of the England fan. And so, what I'd like to know, Steph, is what what do you find in your uh, reportings this evening after the Indian- England Columbia game? <laughs> well, Tom, thanks for asking. Um, I found a sir, a sir, a knight yeah, of the realm, a knight of the realm. I found a knight of the realm. A couple of lads, uh, a couple more lads. One girl, and uh, and that was about it. Right, so um, let's hear what they've got to say. Hi guys, yeah, yeah, thanks, 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 Tom, thanks for sending me over. Uh, I'm actually joined here live outside the Pilgrim Pub in Kennington by a young man called uh, Ben Hardy. Ben, um, what a game! <laughs> what a game! Uh, fucking superb! You know, uh, I've never seen scenes like it. Did you throw your point at any point? Yeah, I did. Who did it go over tonight, Ben? Uh, Sarah Daly. Yeah, and let's bring Sarah Daly in here. Sarah, um, uh, what was your reaction when the point went over you? I was happy. I was still happy. England scored. <laughs> Thanks for that dynamite analysis. That's true, actually. Are you yeah. actually a sir? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sir Simon. Yes. Sir, sir Simon, what's your surname? Please? Wesley. Yeah. Sir Simon Wesley. Thanks yeah. for joining us on the, Thank uh, you. On the podcast. Um, what was your reaction when Eric died? So well, I that home. Brilliant. I'm the only person in this pub who can probably remember the last time we won a shootout. Well, we never and won a shootout. 1996, <laughs> actually. In I the can Euros. remember it, and they can't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just remember. Yeah. 1886, actually. It was probably more likely, <laughs> yeah. which is why I've completely lost my voice. This is rather obvious. But um, yeah, I'm a psychiatrist, and I've just seen a whole bunch of people go completely, absolutely apeshit mad. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Simon, so, mean, where will you be watching on Saturday? Uh, well, at my son's place, around the corner. Excellent. Yeah, I don't think we can stand in the pub anymore. The tension is just too high. <laughs> now, before I let you go, Simon, yeah. um, when England conceded that 93rd minute equaliser, did you think, same old England? Absolutely, 100%. Without any shadow of doubt. And right up to the halfway through extra time, I thought we were completely screwed. And then we came back, but then it's a shootout and everybody knows. Well, yeah, as I can actually remember the 96 game and everybody else here can't. <laughs> Last question, is football coming home? Certainly now, certainly now, yeah, certainly. Uh, I'm also actually joined here by a young man called Joe Richardson. Uh, Joe, you've, um, you know, you've travelled far and wide and where does tonight rank among your experiences in life? Hi, Steph. Um... I was saying earlier, actually, the last time I remember being that nervous was uh, United-Chelsea back in 2008. Um, And we got the win then on penalties, and I'm just glad that we got the win again today. Talk me through your emotions as Eric Dyer stepped up to slot that one home. That, I feel like we we were through the worst of it then. Um, I I couldn't even comprehend that he'd missed. I thought it would just be too cruel of the universe to let that happen. Um... But I, I'd given up. When uh, Henderson missed, that was it for me, I thought. We finished. Um, 
one of the great nights, I would say. One of the one of the great one of those moments I think we'll look back on in 20 years and be like, shit, I remember that. I'm gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Off to the quarterfinals, England go. We go marching on. Sweden, three o'clock, four pm if you're in Europe, like we'll be. Yeah. Um Come on, England. We can do this. We can get to the semis and then we can go on to beat the next little slugs, whoever they are, Russia or Croatia. Thoughts, Steph? Yeah. So they're very nice. Yeah. Right. Email in TNS World Cup Podcast 2018 at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Love to hear your songs. I've heard that Tom Peace, one of our uh, close friends, has been uh, working on quite a masterpiece. So, yeah, looking forward to hearing that, Tom. And we'll see you later. <laughs>